living up underneath bridges. I'm talking about highly educated people. Uh, that, that's why it, it kind of disturbs me when, when I hear people say that, that uh, you know, they can't work and they're in better physical shape than I am. You know, you can work. And, and you, you just got to be prepared for this thing. And um, you, just, you just can't think that somebody's going to always bail you out. It's just, though, though, listen, people, I, I, as you know, I just turned 62 years old. And, and in my opinion, I think I grew up in the best time that the United States has ever known. There was a time when children could walk outside the house and run all over the neighborhood. And nobody was concerned about it. There was a time when, when, when things were right. And that time is gone. There was a time of prosperity. I, I'm telling you right now, we will never see that time of prosperity again in this country. That time is gone. Wake up. And you've got to understand what you're facing here, and you've got to be prepared. And if you're prepared, we, you'll, we'll endure something if it, if, if, it, if it happens. And you know what? If it doesn't happen, bless God, that's wonderful. It, you go, you're going to learn how to take care of yourself. Amen? You don't need to depend on the government. You don't need to depend on anybody else. You've got, you've got to depend on God. And I'm not talking about over-spiritualizing it. You've got to do the best you can in the natural and the best you can in the spiritual. Amen? Yes. I'm just, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm, I'm concerned about our government and in, in, in the uh, position that they've taken. I, I, I'm concerned about all these issues that I'm seeing, uh, these laws that have been changed, our Constitution that have been stepped on. Our rights as Christians is, is basically no more. The Muslims have more rights than the Christian has. Uh, it's, it's just wrong. And they're trying to uh, do away with the Marriage Act, the protection of the Marriage Act right now. It's just, it's wrong. And so what I've just got to tell you, I'm not, it's not gloom and doom. It's the fact that let's wake up and real, get your head out of the sand and realize the, the country we're living in and be prepared for something. And that way when something does happen, you're going to be okay. Amen? You'll, you'll, you'll be all right. But if you're like these others that stuck their head in the sand and, and thought they'd just finance themselves out and lived way above their means, and now they're out here living in the street, you know what? That could be you. That could be you if something hits and all of a sudden, you know, you're going to be out there in the street somewhere. That, that's not God's best for you. And don't sit back and say, well, the Lord will take care of me. The Lord takes care of those that take care of themselves. Is everybody okay? So uh, let's get into the Word this morning. But I wanted to uh, address that issue with you. I think it's important that, that we understand that. And If you ever get a chance, you ought to try to pay attention to... Uh, some of the news that's going on from outside the United States. You would be surprised. Sometimes we, uh oh, here, can y'all okay? Uh, sometimes we sit back and we see all these other countries with what they're calling propaganda to their people and not tell them the truth. And we think, well, uh, how bad is that? <laughs> Look in the mirror. If you pay attention to any of the news going on outside of the United States, it's a whole different perspective than what we're getting. So that propaganda goes both ways, people. I know some people get mad at me and say, well, you know, Pastor, you ought not be talking about the great United States like that. Well, the great United States is still the best country in the world. But that's not saying much. That's not saying much. Amen. Okay, let's get in the Word this morning, all right? I think I'll run for president. <laughs> Glory to God. If I run for president, I'm going to get rid of a lot of these, lot of these laws that's going on, which, which, oh, boy, don't get me off on that. Let's get in the Word this morning, <laughs> amen? I almost announced my candidacy. I better watch out. <laughs> Turn with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 23. Verse 7, the title of this message is Perception. How do we perceive ourselves? 
How do we perceive the world? How do we perceive each other? Perception is extremely important. It's kind of like putting on a set of sunglasses. You view the world through your perception. And as I've said before, sometimes the way that we're raised up, that's our perception of life. And everybody ought to fit into our perception. And if they don't, we think something's wrong with them. Because what happens in our life, what is really abnormal, has become the normal in our life. And therefore, that's our perception of things. That's why we must know the Word of God. Because the Word of God will bring us balance. You know, I, I struck on a note last Wednesday night that the, that the Lord gave me, and, 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 and I, I can't seem to leave it alone. God keeps dealing with me on it, and it's, it's the fact that our home life ought to be a happier place than our church life. So many times, and, and, and you, you may not ever have heard a pastor say this, because I've been in churches before where they want the church life to be your entire life. They want you to give everything to the church. They want you to donate all your time to the church. And, you know, it, it's the church, the church, the church, the church, the church. That's not according to God's Word. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. He didn't say, I've come to give you church. Amen? Because the truth be known, if your home life is the way it ought to be, the church will be strong. But if you just come to the church, and what we end up doing, as I've said many times, we end up swapping addictions. We used to be addicted to these other things on the street. Now we're addicted to church. <coughs> Excuse me. That we want to come to church and feel good. We come to church and get excited, and that's wonderful. We come to church to hear the Word of God, and we get it, and that's wonderful. But what happens if it's so wonderful, and then you leave the church, you leave the parking lot, and you go home to a hellhole? Something's wrong here. If your home life is worse than your church life, we've got this thing screwed up. Your home life ought to be a happier place than your church life. Mm -hmm. Is everybody with me? I, I know. Y'all ain't ever heard this before. And I know it. I get run out of most pastors' associations for saying that. I've been run out of better places. Amen? <laughs> but the truth of God, God is speaking to my heart about about he's trying to get his people ready. How can we possibly get our people ready when all we want them to do is come to church and run and shout and jerk and fall out and sing and shout and you go home to a hellhole. You go home to arguing. You go home to fighting. You go home to all this turmoil and all this strife. No wonder the church is in the sorry situation that it's in in this country. Personally, I think Covenant Confirmers Church has got a great church. I think we're accomplishing some great things. And just like Jesus with the disciples, Jesus turned the whole world around with 12 people. We don't need 20,000 members to change the world. We're doing it with the members that we've got. I would hold up our testimony against any ministry in the world to the effect that we've had. But it's not good enough. Because as I speak with some of you on a personal basis, and I hear from time to time what's going on in your life, my heart breaks for you. Because it's like you're coming to church to get your fix. The church is to empower you to live your life. If your home life 
is not better than your church life. We've got this thing all wrong. I'm not diminishing the importance of church life. Church life is extremely important. But if your home life doesn't at least match what's going on here, we got trouble at home. If you got trouble at home, we're just coming to church with a plastic face. We're just, we're, we're, we're no different than a whole lot of churches out there and a whole lot of ministries out there. We just play in church. We're coming to church acting like everything's okay. We're laughing. We're shaking people's hands. We put that fake smile on our face because we know as soon as church is over, our joy is over. Our happiness is over. That's why, it's, that's why it's so hard for some of you to leave. <laughs> Have you ever noticed how long y'all stick around? It's almost like the nightclub. We got to turn the lights off and on and say, go home. <laughs> Which is a great thing. I can't tell you how many visitors have come, and, and even some of y'all have said, the moment I walked on that property, I felt the love of God. When I walked in the building, I felt, I couldn't, I can't tell you what it was, but I felt something. And that is the power of God, that's the love of God, because we're trying to do this thing right. We're trying, not just Pastor Ron, we're all in this together. Amen? So what we're going to look at today is our perception of things. Because our perception has got to change. We're living in a world right now where we have, we have been trained and taught from religion, denominations, and television and movies how we're supposed to perceive God. And that has changed in so many ways. God said, I am God. I change not. So I don't care what theologians got to change. I don't care what denominations want to change. God says, I change not. God feels the same way about sin today that he felt in the beginnings of time. He's going to feel the same way at Judgment Day. You're not going to be able to say to God, Well, God, TBN told me it was okay. Well, God, my denomination said it was okay. No, God's going to say to you, I sent you my prophets, I sent you my pastors, I sent you my evangelists, I sent you my teachers, so that you could know what I have said, but you refused what I have said, you turned to what the world had said. So you see, it's our perception of what we have learned, the truth be, the truth be known, Majority of Christians in the United States today don't believe God. We come to church out of a social issue. We come to church because it's popular. We come to church because we want to be able to feel good for an hour. Honey, the church is to empower you so you feel good 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even though you go through trials, tribulations, and temptations. Believe me, you can go through the hardest things in your life and still feel good. 